had soon we left off on that Tsukehime game, we, well, Shiki managed to, um, uh, kill Arkrid. Then she came back and explained to him rather casually that, yeah, she's actually kind of sort of an immortal vampire, and she really didn't appreci appreciate being killed like that. So now she has more or less hired Shiki to be her bodyguard while she recovers from the, um, uh, recovery. Recovers from the recovery, or regains her energy from having to recover. And he is now on guard duty, I guess, outside of Arkwood's hotel room. Or inside Arkwood's hotel room. Okay. So she just kind of fell asleep, and Shiki's just standing here thinking, She's so stupid. She's so stupidly honest, I might start to worry. But aside from that, this is a turning point. This may very well be the point of no return for Tono Shiki. Should we escape the hotel room and leave her? Or... Well, we did say that we would be her guardian. I mean... Shiki's not the sort of lad who would break his word, is he? Nah. I did promise, after all. No matter what it was, I promise, I can't break it. Arkwood is sleeping. Her face is a pale white like that of a sick person. Arkwood said she was weak. She said she was at her limit just a while ago, so I don't think she considered what I could I don't think she considered what I could do after she went to sleep. The room is quiet. We're on the eleventh floor, the top floor. Since she rented out the whole floor, there are no other guests here. The only sound is Arkwood's breathing. Why is here like this? She really looks nightmarishly beautiful. That white, smooth skin and those, that silky light blonde hair, the soft lines of her body and those long eyelashes that look like swift, swift brush strokes. I can't pronounce S's. A perfect body, down to even the small details, the like of which I've never seen before. No, to be more precise, the kind of which I have never seen in my entire life. I would never would have seen in my entire life. Huh. Vampire or not, Arkwood is a girl. I have to take responsibility for the fact she's so weak now that she falls asleep instantly like she just did. You have to take responsibility for your own deeds. A part of my childhood education makes me makes an appearance in my head. Since they even told me. My eyes are strange, so they wouldn't turn to track strange things. Then maybe I should be prepared to take responsibility. At the very least, I should keep my promise to protect her for tonight. White. The kind that you see when you wake up. I don't. That color causes some nostalgic memories to mind. A hot summer day. A blue sky and large and large, large columns of summer clouds. The scenery slowly wavers in the heat. The voice of cicadas. The sound of cicadas. Chirp. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, I'm a Kikeda, chirp. Chirp, chirp. Kikeda shells are lying in the clearing. As if the sun is right inside, is right by my side, the clearing is roasting. A hot midsummer's day. As if the entire world became a frying pan. Ugh, ugh, ooh, ah. Ugh, ooh, ah. What is this? Akiha, oh, Akiha is crying. Akia, who would always obediently stay close behind me, is brimming forth with tears. A child lies collapsed at her feet, soaked in blood, killed. The corpse of a child about my age. A cast off cicada shell. My two hands are red with the blood of that collapsed child. Shiki! The adults are coming. The fallen child is still dead. The adults are yelling. Did you kill him? That dream. A dream I had forgotten, even in my dreams. I feel like... I remember. Shaky. Hey, wake up. The sun's already set. Someone is... Someone is shaking me. A somewhat unfamiliar voice from the touch of a cold hand on my shoulder. Nah. Uh, uh. Huh? Arkwood is standing right in front of me. 
She's already woken up, and it's pitch black outside. I glance at the clock, and it says it's already 8. Eh? It's not eh. I told you to wake me up when the sun went down. Now you go and fall asleep. Crap. Sorry, I, w I was feeling out of it. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I'm sure it was while I was staring at Arkwood's sleeping face. Jeez, you lose your qualification as a bodyguard like that. If Amy had attacked while we were both sleeping, we could have both died, you know. I, I said I'm sorry. Besides, you said I was safe during the daytime. I can't say that for sure. Familiars like the one we just saw this morning could have come for us. Arkwood is angry. Well, she's got a right to be. I went nowhere to talk when I, the bodyguard, dozed off while she was sleeping. And besides, I'm a vampire, you know? I can just sleep there without feeling any danger. I don't want you to be afraid for no reason, but it'd be nice if you were at least tense enough not to sleep. <laughs> I take that back. Arco doesn't seem to care that I didn't do my job as a bodyguard. She just doesn't seem to like the fact that I fell asleep. I can move my body a little better and wake up, only to find you sleeping there happily. You look so vulnerable, I was seriously starting to feel uneasy that I might not have the dig that I might not have the dignity befitting a vampire. Ellipsis. Well, I don't think she has much dignity. You were just as you were just as vulnerable yourself. I killed you once before, remember? You can't guarantee I won't do it again, can you? Ah. Arkwood gives a surprised look, as if she only just realized it. Now that you mention it, you're right. I wonder why I did that. I guess I just had a complete confidence in you since we spoke in the alley. Ellipsis. Well, saying that doesn't make me feel bad for her. Okay, since you, tr since, since you trust me so much, I'll try my best. So, should I just keep watch from now on? Yeah, until sunrise tomorrow. I can't leave the room, so be on guard until if someone comes up to this floor. Be on guard, huh? Well, be on guard is going to do me no good if one of those black dogs from this morning comes for us. <sighs> I let out a sigh. As expected, this is too heavy a role for me. Let me ask you something. Was the black dog that attacked us this morning something your enemy sent out? I don't think so. It was probably for surveillance. As the patroller happened to pass through where you and I were talking, it seems my presence was revealed as a result. Revealed? To your enemy? That's right. If I had been in perfect condition, it would actually save me some time. But right now, it's just the opposite. If I were attacked now, I'd be the one annihilated. That's why I have to hide out like this for now until my power returns. Arkwood's enemy. In other words, the serial killer who's been causing this stir in this town. A vampire. Arkwood, I, wa I want to ask you something. Will you answer my question? I just did. I don't mind talking. But why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Yeah, I, I haven't asked you the most important thing yet. So, what's your ultimate objective here? Me? I'm here to hunt down the vampire. Killing vampires is my duty. Yeah, I do remember you saying something like that before. But you're a vampire, right? What? You still don't believe me? Oh, don't worry, I believe you so much it hurts. I'm asking you why would you, a vampire, claim to be doing something as odd as killing other vampires? Oh? You don't like the idea of beings from the same species killing each other? The act of killing doesn't exactly make my list of favorite things, but she's right. I'm not comfortable with the idea of vampires killing vampires. No, it, it's just I can't really imagine something like that happening. Vampires drain the blood of humans, right? So they should be killing humans, not other vampires. Drinking blood and killing are different things. Well, even so, I know what you're trying to say. You think beings from the same species should help each other out, right? But vampires can be of, of the same species and still be different life forms. That's why they don't really have what you humans call camaraderie. Huh? Then you're saying something makes you different from the vampire you're hunting? Like... Your Bruja, he's Malkavian? That's right. The one after is a human vampire, just like the stereotypical vampire from you, from your humans, you humans folklore. He kills humans, but he kills humans by draining their blood, turning them into the dead, then uses them to increase his power and influence. That's the sort of vampire I hunt. The one lurking in this town is that sort of old-style vampire. That sort of vampire? 
Seems like there's different types. Don't tell me you want me to be your shield so you can get this so you can get this guy. Yeah, that was my original intent. After talking to you, I've changed my mind. You see, at first, I thought you were someone from the church. So I thought you might have information about the location of the enemy. But you turned out to be a perfectly ordinary person. You didn't even know about vampires, let alone the location of the enemy's coffin. Yeah, come to think of it, there's no way they send an exorcist to the far to a far east secular country like this one. I guess I didn't put enough thought into this. Arkwood thinks aloud. The conversation derails, and I'm feeling a little left out. I don't follow you at all, Arkwood. Oh, hold on for a moment. Let's see. How should I explain this? With that, her gaze begins drifting. She doesn't seem used to holding a conversation. Don't worry about it. Just explain everything about the current situation. I, I don't understand any of this, but I might be able to see the general gist of things. Really? Thanks, Jakey. You don't have to thank me. Just keep talking. Arkwood nods immediately. Basically, the vampire currently in this town is an old-style vampire. He himself reigns rain, as the lord and releases the dead he made into the city. By doing so, he increases his power bit by bit. He's a typical vampire in that he drains the blood of humans, and those humans become vampires themselves. He's not very powerful right now, as he doesn't have many dead serving him, but as the victims increase, so does his power. It'd be best to destroy the main body before that happens, but I haven't found where he sleeps yet. He's hidden so well right now, I can't even feel his presence. He's hiding his power level. But even so, it's easy to take care of things once I find it. I don't have any clues whatsoever, so I had no choice but to walk around town during the day to investigate. But then I suddenly got attacked by a passing killer, and now I'm temporarily weaker than the enemy vampire. Arkwood shoots me a cold look. I guess she wants to say something to the passing killer. I see, I, I kind of understand the situation now. So, in other words, some evil monsters are based in this town, and you're here to eliminate them. Since you didn't know where they were, you went looking for them, and that's when I... Uh... Killed you. So now you're weakened and holding out while you recover. Is that about right? To put it simply, I think so. Then, next is the main topic. You casually call yourself a vampire, but I still don't really understand that term. It's obvious you're not a human, that much I can see, but I don't get the feeling that you're a vampire either. That's true. I'm a little different from the type of vampire you know about. Indeed. I, I, I hadn't considered that vampires even existed at all, let alone a vampire like you. So, what makes you different? Arkwood thinks. Yes, I suppose it might be helpful to teach you a bit about us. Alright. Now the first period's lessons will be Vampires 101. Okay, but what's with this 101 stuff? You're an amateur at this, so you've got to start with the basics, right? That's how I'm going to start teaching from the very beginning. Okay, whatever. Just keep it short. Well, I'll try my best. It really doesn't seem like she's not used to talking. Well, I've got lots of time, so for now I guess I'll listen darkly without complaint. Although we're typically called simple, sim called simply vampires, we're divided into two main categories. Those who are vampires from the start, and those who become vampires. The former are called true ancestors, and the latter are called the dead, or the dead apostles. The ones you call vampires are the dead apostles. They drain the blood of humans and turn them into their slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. But the weaker gets sunlight, and you can vanquish them with a baptism ritual. Our enemy is one of those, one of these dead apostles. It's gone from my enemy to our enemy. Well, I don't mind. It's not wrong considering the situation I'm in now. Hmm. So you're saying these dead apostles aren't vampires from the start? What do you mean by that? Dead apostles were once humans. They've attained immortality through magic, or rather blood sucked by one of the true ancestors. Either way, the ones that become vampires become immortal, even though it's imperfect immortality. Huh. Those were vampires from the beginning, and humans who became vampires. What is this? I have the feeling that there's some kind of huge contradiction to all of this. It feels like some important, fundament some important fundamental is missing somewhere in this theory. 
Hey, Shucky. How much do you know about vampire folklore? Um, let's see. Just the usual stuff. They suck the blood of virgins, they can bind people just by looking at them, they can turn into mists and wolves, you know, Alucard type stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much all true. They're doing the blood of virgins because one's blood cells are more pure before one has to change bodily fluids with others. That's, that makes virgins more suitable for repairing the vampire's own degenerating genes. Okay. The dead apostles, the ones that become vampires, have imperfect immortality. Since they become immortal, they don't die from old age. However, they need to replenish their energy frequently, or they'll disappear. All living creatures need nutrients to be able to move, right? It's the same thing. It's just that vampires don't die from age as long as they take in the nutrients. The dead apostles suck blood because they need to stay alive. Immortality is a strain on the originally human bodies. The genes that compose their bodies are different. When they become vampires, they begin to degenerate at an, at an incredible rate. To make up for that, they must drain the blood of others in order to absorb genetic information and stabilize their own bodies. To a vampire, drinking blood is not like eating, but it's, it's the minimum requirement for them to continue to exist. Huh. This sounds complex. And long. I can't follow the logic, but Arco nonetheless continues speaking. So moving on. The ability to bind someone with just a look is a type of mystic eyes. Eyes and words are both common types of magic circuits, so there are many vampires who have mystic eyes. We usually possess the mystic eyes of enchantment. We don't enchant people by looking at them, rather we enchant those who look into our eyes. A powerful vampire using mystic eyes can pose his will his own will onto the brain of another and completely dominate their thoughts. But the mystic eyes of a dead apostle doesn't have that much power. What you call turning into mist is just really making a spare body and controlling it via the will. Once a part serves its purpose, you can you cut the flow of magical energy to the offshoot, and naturally, it returns to dust. Wolves and other animal transformations are a byproduct of vampires repairing this damaged body from its familiars. For a vampire living in a long time, stabilizing their bodies with normal lives is not sufficient. Humans are not fundamentally powerful animals, so it's more effective to repair one's own body by absorbing beasts, as they surpass the human species in this respect. Vampires who repair their own bodies with beasts can return, can return those beasts to their previous forms and use them as familiars when they need to. So, what, Chaos ate a crow sometime? Hmm, from what I've heard, there's even a thousand-year-old vampire whose body is made up, made up entirely of familiars. They say, they say he contains 666 beasts within his body, or something like that, anyway. Huh. I think Arkwood's getting a little too wrapped up in your own speech. To be honest, I'm not finding this world easy to understand. Yeah, that's about it. It's just an explanation of the very basics, but now you do know what a vampire is, yes? Well, I suppose. The reality of Arkwood becoming a vampire begins to feel harder and harder to accept. Now it's my turn. Actually, there's something important I've forgotten to ask you, too. What? You're not going to learn anything from me. I'm not a vampire, I think, just an ordinary student. Hmm. Well, let me ask you this, Shiki. How exactly did you kill me? Huh? I'm asking about the method you used. I'm resistant against stuff like Gruens and Kabbalah, so those don't work on me. The only things I'm not resistant against is magic I've yet to experience, which is probably limited to the ancient Shinto in this country, and the treasures in South America. No, not even those could kill me that much. Ask me, Shiki. What kind of occult artifact did you use to inca incapacitate me to that degree? Occult artifact? What's that? A catalyst which stores ideas in history. Jeez, you've got sacred treasures in this country too, don't you? They're usually something like staves and swords, jewels and masks, conceptual weapons that can be used against nature itself. Come on, Shiki. Are you sure you're not someone from one of those fields? What field? I told you I'm just a student. I don't know anything. That's a lie. There's no way a human who's not even a magus can hurt me. Are you hiding something from me, Shiki? Arko gives me an angry cat-like stare. And she gets buried behind this wall of text. But even if she looks at me like that, I'm not hiding it. Oh, wait. Actually, there's one thing. I'm not sure whether it's relevant, but... Arko is still staring at me. Doesn't seem like I'll be able to keep quiet about it. Alright, I'll tell you, but how should I put this? I can see these lines that can be used to cut things. Eh? Oh. She's stunned. 
She should be. Normally, I don't think anyone would believe a story like this. What do you mean? I could ask in a serious tone. She's not exactly normal. I should have known she would defy my expectations in a good way. I mean, I, I see these lines where things can be cut. Living things, the ground, anything touchable. It's like a black line and it can cut things clean when I let anything sharp through it. Does that mean anything to you? It's convenient to be able to cut steel with a, with a knife and all, but it's not like I can cut, any, cut it anywhere I like. I can only cut things where I can see the lines. And when I cut, and when I cut you, well, you can cut a girl's skin with just a knife, right? Stare. Awkward's eyes are serious as she glances at me, those wild eyes that I've only seen once before. I guess I could stop my breathing. I see. I thought the mystic eyes of death perception only existed in fairy tales. But I guess there is someone who can use them. A mutated monster like you. What? I don't think a vampire can call me a monster. A monster is a monster. There isn't anyone, even amongst us, with mystic, with mystic eyes that can see the death of things. Huh? See the death of things? Awkward nods information uh, with an in inimical gaze. I don't know that word. A circuit must have opened in your eyes, Chicky. Were you born with eyes like that? No, they became li like this a long time ago, but I wasn't born with them. Hmm. Then you must have at least you must have had at least one near death experience at some point, right? Huh? Well, it's true. Eight years ago, I got in an accident where I almost died. Just as I suspected. You had the Latin ability, but must have, but that must have been the trigger. The mystic eyes of death perception, huh? Yes, for those, you could definitely kill even me. With a small sigh, Arkwood's eyes return to normal. Arkwood, do you know something about these lines? Not to the extent you would, but I do have some information. What you see is the end of all things. The point where things die easily. To put it simply, the time of death for everything in existence. That is, death itself. Huh. I remember now. That time. When Sensei gave me these glasses, she had told me something similar to what Arkwood said. But there's a subtle difference to what Sensei said and what Arkwood said. What I'm seeing are only lines, and not something as disturbing as death. What are you saying? What I said are just the lines where things can be cut. I'm telling you, those lines are the death of the object. Listen, Shiki. Everything in existence has an end. There are differences to win, but it's an end nonetheless. Death does not arrive. It's already contained with the object at its creation. It's bound to happen someday. This is what is called the principle of causal causal causality. You've heard of that before, right? As long as something has an origin, it must have an end. When it will end is determined from its beginning. That's its so-called time of death. So as it already exists from the beginning, it's not impossible for one to see it with their eyes, given that they can comprehend the concept of a time of death, and they have the appropriate circuit in their brain and eyes. That's the truth behind those lines, you see. This is nothing more than a general concept, but if I were to theorize, I would say that they are the weakest parts of the joints between the molecules and something. Or press a pre-designated switch within the, gene within the genetic makeup that, activ that activates the death of that object. But, but that doesn't really make sense. Hmm. I can't see them, so I can't say for sure. But the lines aren't all you can see, are they? I would think there would be points more than lines. Ah, uh, that's right. When I first saw Arkrid, when I wasn't myself, when I took off my glasses, I could see the actual, s I could see the usual scribbles and black, black points where the scribbles seemed to flow from. There were. It only happened that one time, but. Definitely. I saw black points. There were several on your body, and the black lines flowed between them, joining them up. If I had to make an analogy, I would, ha I would say they were like blood vessels. I see. The lines where things die easily, and death itself, huh? I'm surprised you stayed alive up until, the up until now like this. You must have a very tranquil heart, Shiggy. Awkward says this philosophically. In my own way, I understand what she's saying, but I don't want to believe any of it. What? There's no way that sort of thing exists, let alone me being able to see it. Well, you are seeing it. Usually when you cut a living being's neck, they die. This means it stops because you've cut it. 
Conversely, you can say that if you can't cut somebody's neck, it won't die. Well, this is about me, so just consider it. Just consider it an exception. But in your case, you can ignore the cause. Even against that which is immune to all external effects, you kill first. What is killed then becomes dead. It's not that it's not because you cut it, but in your case, you stop the object, and as a result, it is cut. See? What else can, what, what else can I call you but a monster? You may just call them lines along which something can be cut, but those eyes are more special than those possessed by any other user of supernatural power in history. You, Shiki, have the eyes that can kill anything, just like death itself. Huh. I'm... I'm at a loss for words. If that really is what I see, just like Arkwood is saying, those black lines really are the time of death for all things. Then everything around me is... filled with death. So what? If it's all as you say, I should be able to kill even you. Really? Then let's try it. Arkwood opens the curtains. The lights are off. The only illumination is a faint moonlight coming in through the window. Come on, it's alright. Try it, seriously. Oh wait, could it be you can't see with those glasses you can't see them with those glasses on? Are you sure about this? I take my glasses off. Only to see the lines, of course. At the same time, the room gets your rhythm with the black lines. Outside the window, the moon is white. No sir, that's blue. The difficult to see in the daytime due to the strong sunlight, but under the moon, under the faint moonlight, I can even see the glow coming from the. I can, I can even see the glow coming from the lines. I miss them. The lines on Arkwood's body are very thin. If I don't concentrate, I lose sight of them altogether. Uh, if I hadn't been killed by you, I don't think you'd be able to see any at all. But right now, you can probably see them. You see, although I have no times of death during the night, some do appear during the day. You could kill me because it was during the daytime, but you can see my time of death during nighttime now since I've used up a lot of energy to regenerate myself. In other words, I've lost my immortality. So, can you cut the lines on my body, Shiki? Um, let's see. I think I probably could since the lines are there. I don't think I could do it so briskly and without hesitation like that time before. I think it'd be hard. Lines keep fading in and out, so I probably couldn't do it unless you're sleeping. You can't, right? That's your biggest weak point. No matter how many deaths you can see, you need to trace a line with your own hands. No matter how weak I am right now, my athletic ability isn't so low that it'd be caught by you. I see. Come to think of it, I can't catch agile. I can't catch agile animals. That means I can't touch their bodies. In other words, even I can see the lines, I can't kill anything that moves. Ow! I feel a stab of pain running, running through my head. Looking at the lines gives me a headache, just like it did when I was when I was a child. I put on my glasses and the world returns to normal. <sighs> Arkwood is staring intently at me. What? Is there something else? No, that's not it. You can't see the lines you put those glasses on? Yeah. I got them from someone a long time ago, when my eyes first became like this. I'm only using the lenses now, but thanks to them I can lead a normal life. Yes, I see. No matter how strong a mind you may have, the only choices when faced with death all the time would be to put your would be to put out your eyes or go mad. Saying that, Arkwood com comes closer. Hey, can I take a look at them? No, these are important to me. I'm not handing them over to you. Come on, I'm not going to break them. I'm just going to look at them. Arkwood creeps closer. I get the feeling she wouldn't be adverse to getting them by force. I don't know. Fine, but just for a little bit, or no, I have a bad feeling about it. What should we do? Can I touch your glasses? She seems legit. Okay, number one. Activate eye lasers. I mean, she could have killed us before, and she didn't, so sure, why not? Arku doesn't look like she's going to give up. Fine. Give them back as soon as you're done looking. I hand her my glasses. Everything becomes green and purple, green and purple, green and purple. Arku stares intently at the glasses and looks at me with frightening eyes. Shiki, is the person who made these glasses in this city right now? I don't think she is. 
It's been eight years, and it seems like she was only here for a week. I see. That's good. I don't have to deal with more... Well, it's probably safer not to deal with Blue in the first place anyway. Arkwood retreats her thoughts. Arkwood, you know Sensei? I mean, I mean the person who made these glasses? I know her. Our sorceress. She is one of only four of her kind. These glasses are truly a masterpiece. Even I can't break them. Arkwood's face grows even more serious. Wait, you were going to break them? Eh? Huh? Did, did I say that part out loud? I knew it! You were going to break them after all! I retrieved the glasses from Arkwood. Jeez. You're the one who just said I couldn't stay sane without these glasses. Or do you want me to go crazy? That's not what I meant. I just didn't like how you treasured them so much. Hey, listen, you... Jeez. Somebody please tell me how a mind like hers works. It's true my memories of Sensei are precious to me. But more importantly, I can't live without them. If I had to see the lines 24 hours a day, I, I think I'd die from the headache before I went mad. Hmm... I suppose there must be a strain on your brain from being able to see death. Yeah, there's definitely some kind of reason for those eyes of yours, but this is all I can tell you for now. If we get the, chan if we get the chance later, I'll go over it in a little more detail. That's alright, I'm, I'm not into long stories anyway. Could've fooled me, Shiki. Is that so? Personally, I enjoy talking to other people. Arkwood gives a carefree laugh. It really does seem like she enjoys doing nothing more than talking. Woman, right? Oh! Anyway, not to sense. Arkwood sits on the bed and we both stare absent absent mindedly at the clock. It's past four in the morning. About an hour until dawn. Just one more hour? Nothing out of the ordinary, of the ordinary has happened until now, and Arkwood showed us no sign of tension. We're surrounded by complete tranquility. Somehow, I'm beginning to believe that tonight might just end like this. Hey, Shiki. Arkwood calls me again. What? I don't have anything else to talk about. Really? It's such a waste not to talk now that we're in a situation like this. Listen, how many hours do you think I've had to put up with your nonsense talking? Six. Six hours. That's as many as six ones. That's more that's making me more tired than keeping watch. Arkwood gives me a dissatisfied glare. That's right. For some reason Arkwood has been talking to me for six hours straight. I told her she should sleep if she was feeling weak, but she replied that it's more fun to talk. So in the end we ended up facing each other and talking the whole time. <sighs> I just don't know what she's thinking. To top things off, I'm hungry. Come to think of it, my last meal was breakfast, so I haven't eaten anything for a whole day. Why don't you eat something? Why don't you eat something if you're hungry? We're in a fancy hotel, after all, so you can call a room service. That's okay. I I lose my sense of tension if I were fill my stomach now. More importantly, shouldn't you be getting something to eat? You're weakened, but you aren't sleeping, so you should at least get something to eat. If you're not going to eat, then neither am I. No food is meaningful in its own way, but it's boring to eat by myself. Normal food? There's nothing normal or special about... Oh, wait. Who's a vampire? I suppose to her, food would mean drinking someone's blood. Or is there... I, I, I guess being a vampire, you wouldn't usually consume much except blood. She doesn't look like it, but Ark's a vampire. She says vampires need the blood of the blood of humans to survive. Then, just how many people has she drained blood from, and how many people has she killed before? Um, I see who a quick glance at her face. I can't imagine. Even though I know she's a vampire, for some reason I can't imagine her sucking anyone's blood. What? Is there something on my face? Uh. <laughs> She meets my gaze and I quickly look away. Arku continues to stare at me and then gives a laugh from comprehension. Are you curious? Uh, about what? About how many people I've sucked blood from. Um, uh, she completely read my mind. Arku's smile grows even wider and I don't like it. Well, of course I'm curious. I'm helping you, so if I don't know, I won't have any idea about when you might have a change of heart and try to attack me. That would really be a problem. 
I see, I see. Well then, here's the question. How many people's blood have I sucked so far? She bounces lightly up from the bed and walks to the window. How many people? That's, um... Arkwee gives a tearful smile and silently looks in my direction with an air of delight. Damn it, it's obvious that she's trying to provoke me. Fine, I'll answer. Well, let's see, it has to be... In the hundreds? Sorry, you're off. Then in the thousands. Nope, that's wrong too. Arkwood laughs like it's so funny. Somehow this feels really frustrating. Damn, then, well, I doubt it's the case, but in the tens? That's wrong too. Oh, really? Tens, hundreds, thousands? Do you really see me as that sort of person? That's so mean, that would make, that would make me indiscriminate. Am I wrong? Vampires are indiscriminate, aren't they? Even humans get hungry merely by being alive. Then when it's a matter of life and death for you, you wouldn't be picky either. Yes, that's true, but... I haven't tasted blood these last 800 years. Nor have I ever killed an ordinary human. Eh? Wait, is that true? It's the truth. After all, I'm afraid of sucking blood. Huh? Afraid of sucking blood? You've, you've got to be kidding, right? A vampire that's afraid of sucking blood? Why? I suppose I'm a coward. That's why I'm a failure as a vampire. Arkwood grumbles as she looks up at the night sky from the window. She stays like that for a long time, continuing to look up at the sky. Her right back looks vague, hazed over, as if she was merely an illusion. I see. A failure. I whisper and I feel relieved. Somehow, that makes me happy. Of course, it's only natural to be relieved. Because now I know the person sent before me isn't some kind of vicious, evil being. For now, if I were to believe what she says, I won't just be killed by her at random. So I'm safe. I'm safe, but I feel like that's not the only reason I'm relieved. Damn it, what's wrong with me? Be relieved over something like this? How, how can I be happy over something like Ark would be in a failure? Lost it. Oh, there it goes. Not responding, eh? Well, let's try that one again. Our killed stream. Yeah, we can try to start to look at our glasses. Whoops, whoop, oh god, no, what are you doing? Stop, game! Okay, there we go. Suddenly, I feel a faint dizziness. Shaky? What's wrong? You're swearing an awful lot. No, it's just this twinge of pain in my head. I realize something with a shock as I reply to Arkwood. The window behind Arkwood. Behind the glass, within the city streets, still sucking in the darkness of night. A blue crow is looking in my direction. That's... I can do, more st I can do no more than stare at a dim figure through the window. Arkwood turns to the window too. Narrow? Indeed. I have finally found you, Princess of the True Ancestors. From somewhere, a force of will flows into the room. Arkwood's eyes are full of enmity. Outside the window, the crow gets a loud, high pitched scream. This is it. I'm heading there right now. The blue crow flies off. All that remains is the dark of night and the white moon. Suddenly, BOOM! 
With every noise, the room shakes violently. No, to be more precise, the entire hotel shook from that impact. What the hell? I get up from the bed. Arkwood is silent, biting her lip with a vexed expression. Arkwood, that shaking just now. She doesn't answer. Say something! That wasn't an earthquake, was it? If I had to guess, it felt more like someone had driven a large dump truck into the hotel lobby at full speed. It was that kind of impact. Arkwood! She doesn't answer. If I listen closely, I can hear noises from downstairs. Arkwood's face is grave. She said she was powerless right now. That's probably why she's not seeing anything. Only time passes by. Two minutes? It's been two minutes after the impact, but the, the hotel is awfully quiet. Arkwood remains silent and still. It's biting her lip as if withstanding something. I see a trail of red blood slowly flowing down from her lip. Arkwood? Is she worried? Frustrated? She remains still, almost as if she's embracing herself, bearing with something. She said she wouldn't leave the room. Then, what am I here for? Should we go out and check what's happening, or stay inside and keep watch? Well, I guess if... If something hit the hotel, then it's not going to be coming in through the window. One, two, maybe. She could be a distraction when you escape. What is more interesting? Well, that's three for one. So let's see what's happening outside. Alright. I decided what to do from the very beginning, and not just in this past minute. Taking the knife, taking the knife out of my pocket, I walk up to the door. Chicky, I'm going to go check things out. Don't leave this room until I come back. I step out into the hallway, shaking off Arkwood's look that she wants to say something. No one is in the hallway. I couldn't hear from inside, but the hallway is noisy. It's not that this floor is noisy. Rather, the noise is coming from beneath my feet. There is some kind of ruckus on the floor below. I can hear the noise of many people talking. I suppose the impact just woke the guests and they were complaining to the hotel. Doesn't look strange so far. I walk down the hallway. The noise from downstairs is like the sound of ocean waves. Noisy and yet so very solitary and inactive. My the fingers gripping my gripping the knife feel numb. A chill runs over the back of my neck. There's something near my temple. Pain emerges from the back of my eyes. And during it, I walk down the hallway. Hurts. My eyes hurt. My head grows heavy and I feel a drifting sensation, like I'm about to collapse right here. Yeah, I know what this is. Without a doubt, this is a feeling I get right before I collapse from anemia. <sighs> it hurts. It hurts. I almost with that withstand it any longer, I remove my glasses. I can see the elevator. A long hallway. It must be more than ten meters from here to the elevator. And then, with a ding-dong, the elevator comes up to the 11th floor. I can see the lines on the elevator door. No, they're, they're too dense. They look almost pitch black. The door opens. The small steel box opens. Inside that box, crammed to the point of overflowing, is human flesh. Inside that steel box called an elevator, the red meat of humans is ground and pushed in. Inside, two black dogs are voraciously feasting away on something. What? I stop breathing. Like my brain, which just froze, my lungs stop as well. I can't breathe. But that isn't important. My vision turns crimson. With a bubbling sound, blood pours out of the elevator. Amidst the ocean of blood, people... Arms, feet, bones, brains, fingers, organs, and other parts. The two black dogs are the only form of life. My very instincts refuse to take in this scene. Down the hallway, two black dogs are picking at the human corpses. If I listen carefully, I can still hear sounds coming from downstairs. If I listen carefully, there's the sounds of gorging, the chewing of meat, cries for help, and the death screams of people that which can't even be called words anymore. 
what is this? There's no way I can see it. Before my eyes is the image of the dozen beasts eating the people in the hotel alive. A man running down the hallway trying to escape. By the path of light claws the same from the ceiling, slice him open from nose to the back of his head. A girl locking herself away in a room and crying. But to the lions, the doors are stronger than paper. And within the seconds, they demolish it into an unrecognizable shape. So I'm to be the first ones there. People dash for the elevator. But within it, the black dogs waiting inside decapitate them the instant the door is open. At any rate, there is no exception. Beneath my feet, within this huge box hollow hotel, it's a scene from hell I can feel down to my very bones. Ugh! I feel like throwing up. But I can't do that. If I just stand around and do that, I'll become part of that Red Sea. Uh, ugh. Uh, uh, uh. I resume my breathing. I grip, I grip my teeth hard. The dogs inside the elevator notice me. All sounds from below have ceased. <sighs> In other words, there's no longer anyone alive. Uh, the two black dogs begin to run. Of course, towards me, the last pr prey. Uh, uh, the black dog is coming for me. On their bodies, I can see an infinite number of lines, and on their foreheads to the point of death. But even so... My paralyzed mi mind does not order my body to fight or run. The first black dog leaps. Its speed belies all human comparison. It doesn't even take two seconds to cover the ten meters down the hallway. They open their mouths. Mouths filled with things so many times sharper than the knife I have, and their aim straight at my throat. Accurate and fast. The instant I realize they're drawing upon me, the fangs bite into my throat with a crunch. I die. But well, that's not right. I can't be killed by something like this. I refuse to die. The deaths of others would not cause me to hesitate. A hot summer's day. It happened long ago, eight years ago. I've seen something even more terrible. Thrust. I thrust my knife into the forehead of the black dog biting into my neck. My arm moved just before the black dog gripped through my throat. It was done so perfectly, even for myself. Like a machine whose sole function is to cut. I plunge the knife into the dog's forehead without any useless and wasted movement, because that's where the dog's first point was. Normally, even if the brain is destroyed, the muscles try to execute the commands they received from the brain. The black dog would probably have ripped through my throat even if I had just simply pierced its head. Well, normally that would happen. But the black dog is dead. Death is a complete stoppage. At the point when I killed it, it lost every form of validity. The first dog falls on the ground. In its place, the second dog is flying straight at my face. I throw some knife right into its open mouth. Well, that was a mistake. The dog's point is not on its face, but on its chest. Just stabbing in the mouth will not kill it. The knife pierces through the dog's mouth into the back of its head. Naturally, the hand holding the knife still remains in the, dog in the dog's mouth. Ah! The black dog is still alive. Its jaw shuts. The joint between my arm and hand holding the knife has been a... About to be ripped apart. Proper thought returns with the pain. Ah! Ah! You've got to be kidding me! It's, it's as if I'm just letting him chew through my arm by stabbing him in the mouth. Why, you... I try to pull my arm out. The dog's teeth are deep in my arm. It doesn't seem like I can pull it off. More importantly, this black dog, despite having been pierced in the head, is still filled with life. Even though I lift it after piercing his head, it shakes and lands on top of me. Ugh! I fall on the floor. I still can't pull my arm out. The black dog, still piercing the head, applies more power to its bite. <laughs> my arm is surely going to be torn off. I can't believe this. No dog ought to be able to bite anything in that state. You. I feel something wet. I see blood spilling from the black dog's mouth. Is it the black dog's blood leaking from its knife wound to the head? Or is it the blood coming from my arm about to be torn off? To be honest, my head is too messed up to, f too messed up to be feeling the pain. So it isn't really a big deal which one it is. Let go! I try to wrestle away from the black dog, but it's firmly attached to my arm. I can't escape. I can't run away. If I want to escape, I have no choice but to kill it. But how? The head is biting off is the one holding the knife. I'm on the ground, so even supposing I did pull my hand out, the very next instant the dog's mouth will be free to bite through my throat. Ugh. Ah. It's okay. Calm down, Shiki. First, you have to examine the situation well, and then think calmly about it. That's the kind of thinking you've always kept. 
In that case, I can do something. For example, there's plenty of lines on the back of its head. I can see the black point on its chest. The way to survive is awfully simple. But I have my doubts about executing this plan. No matter how savage and evil a creature it is, to do something like kill a panting, grasping creature that's so alive this close to me, it's something I'm hesitant to do. Ugh. The pressure on my arm increases. My entire arm is surely going to be ripped off at this rate. But even so, I can't just do something so cruel. The red blood drips down onto my face. Going down my forehead, it drips into my eyes. Crimson darkness soaks into the back of my eyes. Red. My consciousness sways, and then it's gone. But even so, I can't kill my- I can't bring myself to kill a living creature. What hypocrisy. You've killed something much bigger than a mere dog. Yes, that's right. But that time was different. I wasn't saying when it was Harkwood. Even when I killed the other black dog just a moment ago, that was unrelated to my will. But right now, this is very much my own will. Didn't Sensei say it, Shiki? Use this power according to your own will and no one else's? That's why, as myself right now, I can never take a life for granted. That too is hypocrisy. Because long ago, you... Ah! Uh, that... That is a nightmare from my childhood. See? What are you waiting for? It was a hot summer's day. Kill or be killed. Before my eyes, the blood choked blood-soaked shadow of a boy. You've all already. Hot, hot red blood on my hands. Haven't you killed someone once before? Ah! I thrust. I don't pull, but rather thrust deeper into the black dog's head. I can hear its yelping right in front of me. I think the black dog is crying out. With my arm in its mouth, it could not properly cry, but it's crying anyway. I'm sure that that's how much it must hurt. I don't care. I plunge the knife in deeper along with my arm. Without a sound, the blade of the knife punctures the back of the black dog's head. It's as if the dog has grown a horn. Having split the skull, I easily slash through its skin. Blood and brain spray out as the knife completely emerges from the back of the head. Also, the hand gripping the knife travels completely through. <sighs> but even so, the black dog is still alive. And there's only one thing I have to do. I reach around with my other hand. Peeling the knife from my blood-drenched fingers, I grip the knife with my free hand. And just like that, I thrust it into the point on the black dog's chest. And with that, the black dog dies. The strength drains from his jaws, and I can easily pull my arm back out. Oh, it wasn't torn off at all. I look at my blood-covered arm. There's many teeth marks, but the flesh is almost free of wounds. The blood must have been from the black dog when I impaled it through the head. The pain from when I was, well, from when I was being bitten was really quite trivial, but my fear must have amplified it many times over. <sighs> Lying there on the ground, I look up at the ceiling. My head hurts. It all becomes a patchwork, and here and there, I see the black points of death. My body is freezing, but my mind is burning feverishly. Ugh! Right beside me lay the corpse of the, of the two black dogs. One of my arms is covered in blood, the other clutches a red knife. Also, there's quite an uncountable number of dead bodies downstairs. Huh. <laughs> All I can do is laugh. Because this isn't real. There's no way this can be real. How one point did I, with my eyes wide open, start seeing a nightmare? Ding dong. Huh? A terribly out of place cheerful sound rings out. Damn it, what's with this headache? I stand up, enduring the razor the like pain in my head. Elevator? It seems the sound is the other elevator coming up. The door opens. Insta inside stands a man wearing a black coat. The headache worsens. He's... Yes, I've seen him before. I'm sure I've seen that man before. Silently, he walks towards me. You! I raise my knife as I glare at him. But he doesn't react at all as he walks towards me. It's as if he doesn't notice me at all. The distance between us shrinks. Just a little more, when there's barely one meter between us, and the man, and the man finally seems to notice me. 
those bloodshot eyes. The instant I see those eyes which no human should possess, I lose all freedom to move in my body. I thought I killed everyone, but it seems like there's still someone left. The man turns and looks at the corpses of the two black dogs. You pieces of filth. If you can't even take care of one scrap of meat, you're unworthy to be part of my body. The man voices his displeasure as he raises his hand. His coat lifts like a mantle. Broken. With a splash, the black dog's remains liquefy and disappear to the man's coat. Uh, I can't even scream. Below the man's coat is pure darkness, without even the traces of an outline. All that exists there is mud-like darkness. <laughs> this is dangerous. This guy is just too dangerous. My instincts sound the alarm wildly in my head, but I can't even lift a finger. The man in the black coat approaches me. It's not good if I just stay here. The unstopping headache grows to an unbearable level, telling me this place is dangerous. Whatever the means, if I don't get out of here soon, I'm going to lose my life. But it's too late. The man is right before me. Those eyes aren't looking at me at all. Feed. Here is one of his arms. Below, is, below it lies a chaotic darkness. From there, something huge appears. Womp. The sound of wind. That which has appeared from below the man's coat is a crocodile's mouth. Easily large enough to, swal to swallow a, man's a man whole. Huh? I'm going to die. Right here, in an instant, crunched up like a ball of paper. Just as I was convinced of this, something pulls me back. Clomp. What? I, I can't believe it. Instead of me, the jaws of the crocodile clamp onto the stomach of Arkwood, who just pulled me out of the way. Arkwood's face contorts in agony. She draws back before she's completely devoured by the crocodile's maw. Ellipsis. The man silently watches Arkwood. Arkwood glares back at him with a pained expression, her midsection is stained in red. I can't believe a vampire named Chaos would play such trivial games. It's like a poorly scripted nightmare, narrow chaos. I feel the same way. She catch one of the surviving two ancestors. I never dreamed I would be part of such a foolish festival. This is a nightmare for me, too. The man called Nero quietly lowers his arm. The coat returns to its former position, and the crocodile's mouth disappears underneath. The man looks only at Arkwood, as if he's not concerned about me at all. Stand behind, stand behind her with my knife raised. But what is going on? I have heard that the previous ex executor could not even scratch you. What kind of mistake is this? Right now, your presence is exceedingly weak, even weaker than a mere member of the dead. Were you attacked by the church before I arrived? Arkwood would said. Arkwood says nothing. The man faces his emotionless stare on her. I don't understand. So a limited number of conceptual weapons capable of harming you. The only people in possession of those are the church's assassins, and I don't think the barrel agency would dispatch anyone this far east. The man narrows his eyes slightly as he turns around. Either way, this is most fortunate for me. I shall not ask you why you have been weakened. All I'm going to do is claim your head while I have a chance of winning. Psst. I have my knife preparing for his attack. But, having openly stated he was going to take her head, the man now disappears towards the elevator. It seems despite this claim, the man in the, back, in the black coat is now leaving the hallway for the elevator. Huh? Now I've got absolutely no idea what's going on. About that man, the two dogs who attacked me, the nightmare-like reality of the attack on this hotel, none of it. Shiki. Arkwood leans on me. Ah, it's a terrible wound. Though her stomach stopped bleeding, her face is scrunched up in pain. It happened mere seconds ago. Then what she got from protecting me from that man. Why did you... Yes, I underestimated him slightly. I thought I could help you and then dodge him, but you did really well, Shiki. I guess the wound I got from you wasn't so trifling after all. Arkwood's face, twisted in pain, turns into a small, joking smile. You idiot. I can't watch her any longer. The wish she got for was from protecting me, and the reason she got was because of me, too. There's no place for that stupid... There's no place for that stupid smile of hers. Arkwood leans onto me and lightly closes her eyes. Hold on, don't close your eyes, you idiot. Get a hold of yourself. You're a vampire who can't die at night, right? Well, 
That's true, but it seems like I'm at my limit. What? Sorry, but could you take me back to my room? Arkwood's weight falls on me. Hold on, that's... If she dies, I'll... Hey! I call it to Arkwood as quietly close her eyes. And then... I can hear her happily breathing in her sleep. I shouldn't have bothered worrying. Arkwood is only sleeping. Telling me to take her back to her room like that? How, how selfish of her. It really was selfish of her, but there's no helping in this situation. Besides, if we stay in this hotel any longer, I had the feeling we'd be in a lot of trouble. Ugh. The headache won't stop. I guess I have to rest too or I'll faint. Arkwood's room? Oh, that place. I've only been there once, but I definitely remember it. Well, in that case, there's no point staying here any longer. Carrying Arkwood, I decide to quickly leave the hotel. The city is, sli is slightly lit up. Fortunately, it's too early in the morning for anyone to be awake, so I get to Arkwood's room without being seen. I see, that's how it is. I finally realized why the man left. The streets are beginning, are beginning to become covered with a faint orange light. I guess dawn is breaking already. And I believe that's where we'll stop with this for tonight. But, you do pronounce that name, N-V-S-Q-R, whatever, how it's pronounced. I guess that is pronounced narrow. It's just some really weird way of doing it. Like, it's following the rules of some other language, I'm not sure which. But yeah, that's that's narrow. In the um, uh, Carnival Phantasm um, anime show that they did, they actually have a joke about that. Where they have him ordering dinner from a place where he pays by check and they ask him to sign his name. And he's like, um, um, uh, and yeah. But anyway, that's another thing another time. So, I guess tomorrow night we'll continue with Chapter 4, The Black Beast, here on http colon slash slash www.videovideo.de. I'll continue to stream this live and hope that I don't get a game over where it's so far that I can't, you know, just click through it real fast. Nero has a cool looking moveset in Multi Blood. But on the other hand, he's also really fucking annoying to fight. God damn, I hate it every damn time. But anyway, that's multi that bleh, that was Tsukihime. For now. And I'll I'll, I'll be able to uploading this to YouTube. Yay. So check out the YouTube channel. Video two videos. Advertisement. <laughs>